Johnson Wax Program. Presenting Marion and Jim Jordan as Fibber McGee and Molly. Weems and his orchestra open the show Excuse with... Excuse me, Harpo. What's the matter, Fibber? Oh, listen, I don't want to be uh, persnickety or critical or didactic, but... Oh, yeah? What does didactic mean? <laughs> well, I don't know, but I'd hate to be that way. <laughs> what I was going to say was this. I, I noticed last week that, uh, well, I mean, uh, can't you manage to get a little more uh, hoop de do into your voice? hoop de do Yeah. Uh, can't you work up a little enthusiasm, you know... Uh, make your announcements with, with more gusto and... and uh, Verb? Huh? Verb? What's that? Well, I don't know, but I think that's what you mean, isn't it? Well, roughly, yes. McGee, come away from there. Okay, well, well just bear it in mind, Harpo. I meant it kindly. Well, I took it kindly. Ladies and gentlemen, Ted Weems and... Harpo! Oh, yes, I forgot. Ted Weems and his orchestra open the show with Riding High! <laughs> A housewife writes us that she has some floors of black and yellow linoleum, very striking in appearance. Although such floors are usually most difficult to care for, requiring constant attention, since this housewife started using Johnson's Glow Coat, she cleans them only once a month. They stay so beautifully polished that everyone that comes into the house comments on the lovely floors. Yet, she never has to do any rubbing or buffing. This woman uses Glow Coat on her closet floors, too, so dust can't stick to them. She praises Glow Coat for the protection it gives her linoleum and the great amount of work it saves her. Millions of housewives are enthusiastic users of Johnson's self-polishing Glow Coat, made by the makers of Johnson's Wax. Order Glow Coat tomorrow in the attractive yellow can. By the way, remember, it's very economical to buy the larger sizes. Tonight, we are complying with a number of requests to repeat one of the episodes of a year ago. So let's go to the Wistful Vista bus terminal, where the McGees are going to take an early morning trip. Among the people awaiting the arrival of the 3 a.m. bus, we find Fibber McGee and Molly. It's a wonder they wouldn't fold up the newspapers they leave on these benches, Molly. Well, McGee, at least it's all there. Yeah. That's more than I can say about you. Oh. <laughs> hey, looky here. Now, McGee, stop looking at the picture of that lady dressed up mostly in goose pimples. <laughs> Shucks, Molly, that's art. Looks more like Eve to me. <laughs> no, sir. That's Gypsy Rose Lee. Mm. Mm-hmm. I'll read you the headline that goes with the picture, Molly. Let's see. Morton Minsky claims no vulgarity in striptease. Hmm. Hmm. Striptease? What's that? Is it something like a comic strip? <laughs> well, that depends on who does it. <laughs> this here, this here, Gypsy Rose, she's, uh, she's an expert at the teas. Hmm. Yeah. I suppose she works in a little Gypsy teas room. <laughs> no, that's pretty far-fetched. <laughs> That's what they said about me, Uncle Dennis. That time he swallowed the poker chip and they fetched him 40 miles to a hospital. <laughs> Did he have openers? <laughs> you get it, Molly? I think. Ain't funny, Molly. Okay, McGee. okay. <laughs> it's your deal. Well, shuffle the paper and turn to something interesting. Okay. Let's see now. Here's. Pardon me, Luddy. Would you mind holding your paper still a wee minute? I'm trying to read the funny. Oh. 
Well, is the light all right, sir? Can I strike a few matches for you? Yeah. Thank you kindly, Lassie. But I've only a bit more to read. Cheapskate. <laughs> Talk to me like I own this paper. Well. Ah, isn't that sweet? Look there, McGee. The Dion Quintriplets. <laughs> yep. There's five of them. Can you imagine that? Ah. Uh, <laughs> and look at Dr. Defoe carrying that one piggyback. Oh, uh, piggyback, yeah. I used to do that, Molly, with the kids back in Peoria. Yeah. Piggyback McGee, the kids all called me oh, in them days. My. Piggyback McGee, the peripatetic promulgator of playground paraphernalia and proud philanderator of the pale and picky young papooses of Peoria. <laughs> Romal gave us another page of the paper, piggyback. Ah, 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 that's Gypsy Rose Lee again. You turned the wrong way. Oh, did I? Now, come on, turn over a new leaf. Okay, okay. Hey, looky here, Molly. It says baseball players warm up in training camps. You mean they join the Army? No, no, no. That means that they hey, went... Excuse to... me, folks. Oh, certainly. What is it, mister? You waiting to take the 318 bus? <laughs> you think we come in here to wait for our old age pensions? McGee... <laughs> Pay no attention to him, mister. Yes, we're taking the 318 bus. Well, I just wanted to tell you to keep your wits about you. Huh? What for, buddy? Well, uh, don't look now, but no. I'm a detective for the bus line. Oh, oh yeah. heavenly days, a detective. <laughs> kind of a rumble seat dick, eh, bud? <laughs> I just wanted to warn you to watch your valuables. You carrying much money on you? Oh, I got a $37. dollars McGee! Why did you ask, Mr. Detective? Well, you see, we've had a few pickpockets on our bus lines lately, so I just thought I'd warn you. Of course, probably nothing will happen, but then you never can tell. Oh. <laughs> well, it was real nice of him to warn us now, wasn't it? Oh, I don't know. I guess I can take care of myself. <laughs> I'll never forget the time I was riding the subway from Times Square to Bowling Green. Oh, <laughs> oh hello there, Jerry. Hello, Mr. McGee. Imagine seeing you here at the bus station. Well... <laughs> Gerald said he'd meet me here, but I don't see him anywhere. Oh, maybe he's, he's probably under a bench somewhere. Gerald says he used to meet some nice girls on trains by taking cinders out of their eyes, but he says there's no romance taking carbon monoxide out of their lungs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, isn't that just too, too exhilarating? Yeah, that's too, too uh, sexy. Oh, <laughs> you know, Gerald says almost everybody travels by bus nowadays. That's all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He says his uncle always used to travel by rail, but it took six men to carry him. <laughs> Birds of a feather tar together. Oh, and another thing, Gerald said, was so cute. I mean, it really was, Mr. McGee, really. Yeah? I asked Gerald if buses had dining rooms on them, and what do you think he said? I don't know, but I bet there was food for thought in it. <laughs> Gerald said no, that they didn't have dining rooms, but they were working on a new bus with donut tires and a coffee clutch. Oh. <laughs> okay, Gerald, now I simply must be on. I'll say so. Biddle, biddle, biddle. <laughs> That was Ted Weems and his men playing Rainbow on the River with Perry Como singing. And now, back in the bus station at Wistful Vista, it's just 3 a.m. as we find Fibber and Molly watching the bus pull in. Come on, and hang on to your money, or better still, let me carry it. Hey, what's the idea? Ain't I old enough to carry my own money? Well, if I'm carrying the money, I don't have to worry about you getting lost. (laughs) Besides, as the baby kangaroo says to its mama, getting into your pocket would be child's play. (laughs) I'd like to see somebody take my role. I'd... Hey there, quit shoving there, you. Take it easy, brother. It's only me. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, the bus detective again. Yeah, that guy. <laughs> you know, I don't like that guy's look. You don't. No. 318, now leaving for Johnsonville, Johnsonburg, Johnson's Corners. Johnson's Wax. <laughs> Marco. 
quit acting like a... Horses head, beta toe, Schenectady, Foxtown, Elmira, and Johnstown. Show the driver your ticket. All aboard, please. Up you go, Molly. That a girl. Anna. My, my. Looks real comfortable, doesn't it, McGee? Ah, you betcha. Oh, we've come a long way since the old jitney bus days. I'll say. But it is sort of stuffy in here. Hmm. Hmm. Heavenly days. What's that smell? Garlic? Sure, Babushka. Oh. Always, wherever I'm going, I'm eating garlic. You want some? Heavenly days. <laughs> no. Take it away. Yes, Vodka. Take it outside and bury it. Oh, to bury it? If I am buried, this garlic is losing all its strength. <laughs> that might help some. Yeah, it's strong enough. You should be eating garlic, too, I'm thinking, Tavari. Why should he? Your father is too pale, Babushka. <laughs> he should be more of a rat in the face. My father? <laughs> hey, listen here, Babushka. Don't go too far with me. Sure not, Tavari. I'm only going to spot cop. Well, you shouldn't eat garlic in a public conveyance. No, certainly not, bud. You know, that stuff don't smell like violets. You can eat violets, but with me, violets is for city. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Breakfast, dinner, lunch, always I'm eating garlic. What happens after is some of this business out. Oh. Here, Molly. Sit down next to the window. I'll sit on the aisle. Mm, my, they're nice, comfortable seats, aren't they, McGee? <laughs> I'll say so. Uh, now, now, how about a little snooze, Molly? I can hardly keep my eyes open. You're doing all right with your mouth. Ah, oh. oh, but I am a little sleepy. Me too. I'll never forget the time I was traveling. Good night, bus. McGee. <laughs> Good night, Molly. I don't want to wake Molly, but I do want to tell you that you can keep your linoleum and floors shining like new all the time if you use Johnson's self-polishing glow coat. Now think of it. Glow coat dries in just 20 minutes and shines as it dries without rubbing or buffing. It seals the pores and cracks of the floor so dirt can't get a foothold. You'd better order Johnson's glow coat tomorrow if you want to save yourself a lot of work and yet have floors that everyone will admire. Glow coat is spelled G-L-O hyphen C-O-A-T. Johnson Self-Polishing Glow Coat. <sighs> Molly. Now you should go take a smoke. Put my cigar. Oh. Hey, oh, hey, my pocketbook. Who took my pocketbook? Hey, my pocketbook's gone. Oh, shucks, I wish I'd have let Molly take care of that money. Molly. Hey, Molly. Down to sleep. Now oh, what'll I do? Oh, I gotta find that pocketbook. Maybe, maybe that fellow over there saw it. Hey. Hey, hey, brother. What? What's the matter? Listen, have you seen anything of a pocketbook about this long and... Uh, what? I says, have you seen anything of a pocketbook about... No, I don't want the book. I got the book. No. <laughs> a pocketbook? Have you seen one? No, no, I can't hear you. Have you seen a pocketbook about... Did you find some dough? Eh? Dough. Dough, dough, dough. <laughs> you can't sing any better than that. I don't want to hear you. <laughs> Oh, now, listen, brother. I'm in a jam. I just lost hundreds of dollars. Nope, I never heard it. You sure hadn't told me the rest of it. <laughs> oh, shit. Listen, brother. My name's McGee, and I just lost a wallet with, with, with thousands of dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and then what did the farmer's daughter say? <laughs> what farmer's daughter? Uh, uh, what? What did you say? I said, who was talking? 
talking about a farmer's daughter. Oh, is that so? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I've never been there myself, but they say it's just mighty pretty. Oh, <laughs> oh shucks. Forget the whole thing. Go take a jump in the lake. <laughs> Yes, sir, I certainly will. <laughs> He's a car, that's right. Yes, sir, yes, sir. If I knew which one of these mugs had that pocketbook, I... Oh, well. I suppose I'll have to go and tell Molly. What? <laughs> Please, get off my lap. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. <laughs> This bus driver must have been a ball player. He throws a fast curve. Exactly what I deserve for allowing myself to travel in this absurd fashion with the hoi polloi. With, with the what? The bourgeoisie. Now, now. That ain't what you says before. You're switching on me, Susie. Please. Hey, listen, now, now that we're acquainted, ma'am, uh, let me introduce myself. I beg your pardon. Oh, shucks, don't mention it. You'd have thought of it yourself in a minute. <laughs> My name is McGee. Uh, Fibber McGee, and uh, I'm in trouble. Indeed. Yeah, you, you see, baby, somebody's kidnapped my Mazuma. Mazuma? Kidnapped? Well, I mean, somebody copped my dough, lifted my leather, <laughs> shook me for my sugar. Oh. Now, uh, how about give me giving you a IOU for about 25 bucks so I can... Why, how preposterous. Lend you money? I do not even know you. Well, <laughs> did the United States know France? <laughs> Sir? If you don't leave at once, I shall call the driver. That won't do you any good, sis. I tried him. Oh, well. I'll see you later, babe. I should hope not. Okay, okay, if you want to get stuffy about it. I ought to wake Molly up and tell her. No. I'll get some money somehow. That's what I'll do. Out of the way there, little girl. You mustn't stand in the aisle like that. Like what? Like you would say. Well, just don't stand around in the aisle, that's all. Well, you're in the aisle. Well, I know, but I'm looking for something. What? A pocketbook. Have you seen a pocketbook laying around on the floor any place? Was it a black one? Yeah, that's the one. About this big? Yes, yes, yes. Where'd you put it? With some money in it? That's the one, sis. Where is it? Hurry up. Why? Because it's mine. What? It's a pocketbook. Where is it? I don't know. I didn't see it, I bet you. Spot town. Spot town. Ten minutes stopover. Okay. Say, hey, what is this place? Why, this here's Spot Town, brother. Oh, Ted Wing. Hello, Fibber. You say this is Spot Town? Yeah, why? Why, this is the spot where we go to town with Elmo Tanner whistling finesse. The bus is still stopped at Spot Town. Fibber hasn't found his wallet yet, but Molly is still soundly sleeping, so McGee is trying to borrow some money from the porter. Hey, porter. Hey, boy. Oh, silly what? 
Captain. Hi there, Sil. Yeah, hi, Miss McGee. Are you a porter for the bus lines now, Sil? Yeah, so why? Listen, I just had me my pocket picked. What? I said somebody picked my pocket. Sweet pocket. The left hip... What difference does it make? They make a lot of difference, Miss McGee. How do you figure? Did you wear an old coat? Yes. Yeah, see, you see. Mm-hmm. If you ain't wearing no overcoat, boss, you won't carry no money in it. No. And if somebody picks them pockets, you ain't going to lose nothing. <laughs> no kidding, Phil. I'm in a bad fix. Every cent I had was in that pocketbook. How much money you got with you? Just enough to eat on, boss. Well, how much is that? Nothing. I done it. <laughs> You mean you ain't got any money? Yes, yeah, sir. I ain't. <laughs> well, listen, do you know anybody you could ask for some? Yes, yeah, sir. Fine. I don't know anybody. Give me a little. <laughs> All aboard. Next stop is Johnstown. But excuse me, Miss McGee. I got to go put some glow coat on the waiting room floor. Oh, okay. <laughs> what am I going to tell Molly when she wakes up? <laughs> I wish I knew where to... Oh, uh, excuse me, sis. Uh, may I... Uh... Oh, trying to get fresh, eh, Skippy? <laughs> oh, wait a minute, Grandma. I just wanted to ask... A you... matcher, huh? Oh. It's getting so the girls can't go anywhere anymore without some fresh squirt trying to scrape up an acquaintance. Oh, listen, Grandma, I didn't mean... Oh, you didn't, didn't you? No. Don't tell me, you... You, you, Casaloma. No. <laughs> Now go on and get back to your own seat. My goodness, the girl's got a hard enough time without an old Rui like you coming around and trying to... But listen here, Grandma. I, I'm in a kind of an embarrassing predicament. I, uh, You see, I was... Uh, well, have you got any money with you? Oh, money, yes. eh? First you're out to damage a girl's reputation and now you want money. You're just a gigolo, that's what you are. Oh, now, listen. Now I... stop it, Shorty. You go way back and sit down and leave a girl to her dreams. Girl to her dreams. How oh, there, pardon me, my little aisle blocker. Could you let a man buy? It's pretty hard for a man to get by nowadays. Oh, excuse me, brother. I didn't mean to block the aisle. Not a bit, not a bit. That's two bits, my boy. Yes, sir. Ah, oh, but excuse me, my friend. Permit me to introduce myself. You betcha. I'm Horatio K. Boomer, the secretary and treasurer of the Little Angel Gold Mine Corporation. Tell me, my friend, are you a little angel? I uh, mean, uh, <clears throat> are you a mining man? Well, I always... I thought so. The outdoor type. Sir, you have all the earmarks of the great outdoors. That is, you might think it's great outdoors, but give me an old easy chair and a pie. A pipe? Two pipes. One for blowing bubbles. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm always blowing bubbles, my friend. And out of these bubbles, I have hewed a vast fortune. You, how do you do that? I've often wanted myself. Yes, sir. <laughs> now, the Little Angel Gold Mining Corporation, my friend, is floating a small issue of special preferred stock. Why, my friend... Uh, pardon me, my friend. Certainly, my friend. Listen, my friend. My name is Fibber McGee. And I've just had my pocket picked to quite a sum of money that I was taken out to begin operating on an oil well project. Oh, yes, mm-hmm. oil. Fine business oil. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite occupations. What? Getting out the old oil. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes. Now, as, listen, my friend. As I says, I just had my pocket picked of about $15,000. And... How much? $50,000. Hmm, quite a tiny sum, my friend. Well, it ain't the money I miss so much. It's this being took for a chump. Now, if you could see your way clear, brother, to advance me enough to carry me over till, well, till I get home, uh, five bucks, maybe, I'd, I'd be real much... Uh, about... Pardon me, my friend. What was I... What am I doing here? Oh, yes, yes. I was going to get a drink of water, yes. <laughs> Great thing, water, if you can care for the stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess there ain't nothing for it but to tell Molly. Johnstown next. Johnstown. Molly. Hey. Molly. Oh. Wake up. We're almost there. Oh, 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 uh, almost where, McGee? Johnstown, Molly. Say, I... I, Listen. Oh, dear. I slept like a log. Uh, Molly, I... I... I want to tell you something, Molly. 
What is it, McGee? What's the matter with you, anyway? Well, shucks, I... I hate to... Well, well, it wasn't my fault. What wasn't it's your fault? Johnstown, all out, the end of the line. Johnstown. Shall we take a cab or walk, McGee? Oh, no. Might be more healthy to walk, Molly. I was saying I hate to admit I'm a chump, Molly, but... Heavenly days, McGee. What are you trying to say? Well... You know what that detective told us about pickpockets, Molly? Yes. I... Well. Oh, and that reminds me, McGee. What? Here's your pocketbook. What? I took it out of your pocket whilst you were sleeping. You? I was afraid you'd lose it. I. Uh, now. Uh, you... uh, now, what was you saying? Oh, I. Uh, well. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, shucks, I knew you had it all the time. <laughs> Come on, let's call a cab. Let's call two cabs, one for each of us. to visit me Uncle Dennis, remember? Oh. <laughs> but come on now, McGee, uh, confess. Hmm? You were afraid that somebody had picked your pocket, weren't you? No, not me. <laughs> I should say not. <laughs> Why, I'll never forget the time a fellow did try to pick my pocket. <laughs> I carried his thumb on my watch chain for years. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, McGee. Huh? Remember your resolution to stick to the truth. The truth? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh. Oh, come to think of it, it wasn't his thumb. It was just his little finger. <laughs> Good night. Good night, all. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for the makers of Johnson's Wax and inviting you all to be with us again next Monday at this same time. Good night. The tune right and high is from Red Hot and Blue. This is the Red Network of the National Broadcasting Company. Fibber McGee and Molly will appear in person at the Municipal Auditorium in Junction City, Kansas on Wednesday, March the 3rd.